So gaslighting. Gaslighting, what is it? It is when a manipulation tactic used by somebody to make somebody else question their own reality. That's the basic gist of it. It's a, a term used uh, to describe twisted manipulation that m makes a person doubt, question, disbelieve, or um, have any 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 like non-reality feelings about their own experience, their own reality. Examples of gas. Oh, your your tr truth is twisted. Your experience of reality is twisted, what you believe is twisted, what you, you're being made to think that your truth isn't real. That is one example. Why did you make that up? It might be an example of something they'd say. That's not how it happened. When you know that's how it happened, you even have witnesses as to that's how it's happened. Something happens and that, that's not how it happened, is what they say to you. Another thing that you might hear is, um, well, I don't want to hear it. You're too sensitive or you're jealous. You're just jealous. So your reality of somebody completely flirting with somebody else in front of you or your reality of um, a narcissistic parent putting you down in front of other people or anything like that where, you, where your feelings get involved, your, your reactions come into play and you're told you're too sensitive and you're just jealous or, or, or one or the other, right? that is gaslighting. All right. It's not, it's invalidating. It's twisting your reality and it's making you look like you did something wrong when you actually didn't. Um, everyone says, whatever, you should look at that. So everyone knows you do this thing. You should really look at that. They're not only gaslighting they're they're projecting. Usually the thing they're saying, like they, maybe they say, everyone knows you can't be trusted. You should really look at that in yourself. Well, it's actually them that can't be trusted, right? And they know it and they're projecting that onto you, which is a form of gaslighting. Projection is a form of gaslighting. It's trying to make you believe you're doing the thing they're doing. Um, another example of gaslighting is our disputes to shift the blame. Blame shifting. You suddenly are saying sorry. Here's what you might be doing. You're saying sorry for something that you didn't do. And in the middle of saying sorry, you're going, wait, did I do the thing? You either believe you did the thing or you don't believe you did the thing, but either way, you're saying sorry, right? Or you're feeling guilty or you're feeling like it's your fault. Lies, flat out, straight up lies that are said right to your face as if they are truths. That is a form of gaslighting, especially when it's coupled with this other stuff, right? Lies are one thing. And then lies to gaslight you to make you believe something. It's gaslighting, okay? Denial, even if they are caught. Ever seen that? I call that the kid in the cookie jar syndrome. You know, they got the hand in the cookie jar and you say, why are you stealing a cookie? I'm not. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't take a cookie. Or denial when they're caught because they are they give you a half truth or they lie through omission. They leave pieces out. I didn't actually steal the cookie. It's cookie still in the jar. Well, no, you were going to steal the cookie. How do you know? Maybe my hand's just in the jar. I wasn't going to cheat. I wasn't flirting. I was just I was just talking to someone. I left out the fact that they were talking to someone giving giving texting phone numbers and you know doing all this stuff that is right. Another thing they might do to gaslight you is play the victim. So say you're really hurt about something. I keep using cheating, so let's use something else. Um they are ruining a holiday by acting sour, by acting horrible. And you say, wow, I'm really hurt that you were so upset today. And that like, I don't know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to help. It, it seems like you were really angry all day. What, what was the matter? Well, you know, and then they go into victim mode. Nobody even considered me. Nobody considered that I, you know, or they do something like really awful to you. And then they roll over and play victim. They turn it into something about them. It is hard to explain this one because when you're being gaslighted in this way, you're engaging in it, which is often, you're often engaging in it, which is then making the gaslighting go deeper and deeper and deeper. And by the time they're the full on victim, you're actually feeling bad for them or you're feeling frustrated because you're not being heard or you're feeling like there's, it's so confusing and twisted and mixed up that that yeah, that one's tricky when they play the victim and it's so effective. It's so effective because it plays right to your empathy and it shuts it down. 
Because what are you going to say to someone when they've rolled over and played victim? Nothing. There's nothing you can do to re-engage and to get them to talk and to get them. You can't get them to talk anyway, (laughs) right? In a real way. So yeah. With gaslighting, sometimes it's hard to know what's happening because once you engage with it, it's too late. You think you're in conversation. You think you're in debate. You think you're in an argument. You think you think your side has some weight. You think that that person's going to listen to you or that, you know what I mean? Like you're already engaged. It's too late to catch it as gaslighting or you catch it halfway through and go, oh, I did it again. I fell for the gaslighting. So let's talk about sometimes, sometimes it's easier. Often I think it's easier to just look at your own feelings and your own behaviors and your own actions to see, to get a sense of what's happening with people around you and what people are doing in relation to you. Does that make sense? So if you're second guessing yourself in a conversation or an argument or whatever, you, you might be being having someone gaslight you. If you think it's your fault and that you're too sensitive, like it's only in this relationship that you feel like you're too sensitive. It's only in this, you know, circumstance, then it's probably not you, <laughs> right? It's probably that, that you're being gaslighted. So um, you forget what you were upset over, even in the middle of an argument, you forget the topic. You get so, first of all, you're dissociating to deal with it, most likely. You're dealing with the toxic gaslighting and the projecting and the stonewalling and whatever the heck they're doing to you. Well, stonewalling is another form of gaslighting. It shuts it down, right? So um, if that's happening and you forget, you've disassociated, you've forgotten, or you just are so confused because you're like, wait weren't we talking about this? And then the tangential thing goes over there and then it goes over there and then it goes over there and you can't follow it. And you've completely been by it and you forget. That's a good example. That's a good way to know you're probably being gaslighted. So confusion that goes with what I just said, Um, feeling like you don't appreciate any of the good that you have Um, making excuses for them. So these are kind of signs you're in something toxic and you don't want to face it. But also, if you're making excuses for them, it's because you might be buying into the gaslighting, into the victim stance they're playing, into the uh, empathizing with someone who doesn't have empathy. And that doesn't help you, right? So, okay. Um, You don't tell anyone. You don't tell anyone. uh, How many of us have had these relationships and we don't explain to anyone how twisted and confusing it is? We just sort of live with it right? For a long time. You don't tell anyone about the way the arguments are. You can't make decisions, even simple ones, because the gaslighting makes you believe that you can't trust yourself. You don't know up from down, right from wrong, what from, I mean, you know, right from wrong, but you know what I mean? In yourself, you don't know, you can't trust if what you're deciding is good for you. Well, first of all, you know, usually that you're in something that isn't good for you and you can't get out. So why would you trust yourself? on anything, right? And the gaslighting confuses you so much that you stop trusting your own thoughts. And it's very confusing. Yeah. You can't do anything right. You feel like you can't do anything right. You're feeling like everything you do, you're just walking on eggshells, even with yourself, even when you're by yourself. I can remember like I would do something and I'd I'd get really mad at myself because I did it wrong. And I'm like, wait, no one's here. Who cares? (laughs) Right? It's not... Uh, but it, it's real when it's happening, right? Um, you feel like you're not good enough. Well, it makes sense why you would, right? Um, you're frustrated. You in the you have conversations that when you leave them, you feel frustrated, crazy, and the need to explain or justify yourself. You feel crazy. You feel like pulling your hair out. You feel you feel rage. Some people go into states of reactive abuse from gaslighting because you're not being heard. It's like the worst thing in the world to not be heard in a relationship, isn't it? When you're in the middle of it. So yeah, it's, that's, that sums up gaslighting 